What's happening, people? Welcome back to the Brothers Geek Out podcast. Today's episode, we're going to pay tribute to Donald Sutherland, who passed away. We're going to geek out over the boys, uh, season four. We're going to give you some news and give you our thoughts on Marvel's new podcast. Are they looking to recast Black Panther in the MCU? We've got some other news for you, and then we're going to finish off with this week's retro movies reviews, which is a classic planes, trains, and automobiles. As always, guys, do do check the description. Um, you have the flexibility, the timestamp will be there, so you can skip straight to the Geek Out news, or you have the flexibility to check any part of the show and skip around the show. Um, but as usual, we're going to start off with some real world issues and stuff. But before we get to that, some brothers updates. I'm here. We're in the <laughs> second headquarters in London. I'm Kibbs, side by side. What's happening, Kibbs? All good, bro. All good. All good. Uh, it's been a emotional, long week, bro. As you know, there's some things in the pipeline. I can't say at the moment now. Work in silence, and then uh, once you uh, start getting things done, then reward yourself. So that's the way we're going to see it for now. But I'll let you guys know probably in a couple of months what's happening. But for now, yeah, man, it's been full on. It's been full on. Uh, Looking after the kids and school runs and all the rest of it. I'm feeling it. Last night, near didn't sleep well, so I didn't sleep well. I'm on edge, bro. I feel like... uh, What's his name? Michael Douglas in Falling Down. <laughs> At one point, when I was in the chicken shop, somebody almost bumped into me, and I was like, oh, come on, man, take it easy, man. Walk, walk around. There's a pram there. How can you still hit a leg? Oh, God. You know what I mean? Uh, but other than that, all good, bro. Uh, I'm trying to work out what happened this week. What happened this week, man? Um, well, you did say you had some screeners and stuff that you forgot about. That's how busy it was. Basically. Yeah, can you believe that? First time in... I was so you did you respond? Or you no, I responded and, and I said, yeah, we're going to go. Then they, I got the email the following morning saying, oh, sorry you couldn't make it, but here's an online screen. So it was for Russell Crowe's new movie, The Exorcism. And then there's another one. There was one uh, for Horizon, Chapter 1, Kevin Costner's new one. Mm. So I'm like, oh my God, I completely missed it. But next week, we got a few. Uh... I can't remember one of them. So Atia and her friend is going to go to that one. So she's going to cover that for us. Uh, she recently went to Romeo and Juliet, the Tom Holland one, which I'll put up some of the footage up later on on the channels, guys. And we've got a movie by Lion Gate. It's called Kill, which is pro- they say it's probably one of the most violent movies ever. Really? Yeah. Damn, they're more violent than the boys. That shit goes really Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's been full I heard it's like a, another, like, you know, compar- comparison to like the Indian John Wick. Or whatnot, but it's like a Bollywood John Wick, but it's Lionsgate. Anyway, I'm looking forward to that actually. Yeah, that's Monday, so that's us. That me and G Man will be there. Uh, but yeah, other than that, bro, just taking along, man. I've been, I've been just getting along. I've been, I've been watching Quantum Leap, so mm. that's my go to at the moment. Quantum Leap has been deep recently. So, if you guys are fans of Quantum Leap, the original one, uh, and as an original fan who absolutely loves time travel and what. Sam Beckett went through. This is a nice continued story. Yes, there's a few things they didn't do, but I'm stuck in. I'm almost finishing the first season, so. Well, I think when I get back to Dubai, I'm, I'm gonna get into it. I uh, just don't have the time here, man. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, well, it's been a week since I got here. It's been good to spend some time at home. It's the first time I've actually taken the missus out when we come to London. Normally, I just come home. I just want to be at home and chill out mm. with the family or the kids. But it's like, man, I should take her out and about. There is a lot to see in London. So I saw, saw you know, a few things, took Idris out. Mm. And then we went to, like, London Bridge the other day. But I have to tell a funny story about Idris, man. Idris, what happened? my nephew, man, forgive me, bro, when you see this many years from now. Or if you see this many years from now. But he gave me jokes, bro, man. So I picked him up from school that day. Oh, yesterday. yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. So I was a bit late. Anyway, he come out. We're walking, walking, walking. And then we're walking through, like, Tottenham Green. And we're cutting out through the back. All of a sudden, my guy, I need to go to the toilet, I need to go to the toilet. Like, he, like, held it the whole time until, like, the point of no return, right? Like, critical condition, right? So I was like, oh, man, <laughs> I'm freaking out. <laughs> All right, go at the tree, go to the tree. So um, he pulls out, right, his little tilt tackle and whatnot, and he's going like that, and I'm like, I keep, the stream is strong right now. I'm like, Idris, don't let it touch your clothes. You know, as an adult, you know how to control it. Yeah, yeah, your yeah, clothes, yeah. you push it back. When I'm like, in the dark, don't let it touch your clothes. And the stream's going like that. And I'm like, don't let it touch your clothes. And then, so hit this. Before, yeah. uh, it doesn't. Just before the power stream stopped, 
But you know, you got sprinkles, and so just before I could say, bro, <laughs> Idris, shake it, shake it off. He pulled up, he pulled up, like, ah, Idris, man, oh. you got to shake the, the sprinkles off. Okay. <laughs> and on his hand and stuff. He tried to hold my hand. I'm like, Idris, chill for a second, bro. Can't hold my hand. Come on. Hands are wet, right? Wipe your hands properly. <laughs> I'm going to hold you by your arm for now. I'm calling you Chris to <laughs> He's so cute, man. He makes me laugh, bro. It just has this thing where he holds anything, people, people, to the very last minute. And then he's like, oh, yeah. and it's gone. He does that. But, he does that a lot. He does that a lot. He killed Bless me. Him. He killed he me. me up, man. Oh, he's the best, so man. He's so funny, man. Mashallah, mashallah. So yeah, I'm that's nephew, it. Man. That's the, these are memories that I'm building with him. You know what I mean? This is what I'm saying, what I miss when I come home. Hmm. That's why I try to make effort to be pick him up from school. One way to pick up a lawyer today, but train problems or whatnot. But hmm. I build my own my memories, but you know, it, it, time goes so quick. I miss so many years with them guys. And hmm. same thing with Nia and uh, uh, Isla. I'm missing months, you know, and it's, it's just heartbreaking and stuff. So that's why I want to come back often and get Eula over, but those memories I'm going to love. Because you guys have memories with him when, when Ashraf was telling me you teased him at home or whatnot. Oh, and yeah, no, so I get my ways. So mm. I don't know. He finds me annoying, which is cool. I'm, I'm the annoying one. But he does. I love the, the love he shows when he sees us, which is amazing. Oh, man, it's amazing. You know, it's uh, quite funny. But, you know, since he started martial arts as well, uh, I've been doing the double clap on him, which he hates. <laughs> he always tries to get me back. He hasn't got me back yet. But one day I was really proud of him. I think I was on the way. I was just about to go home. It was a long day at work. Was I picking up near? I can't remember. I was like, Sasa, come here, come here, come here, come here. And then he just got me. Double clap. And I was like, I'm proud of you. That was good time. It was, it was like good time, man. He caught me right off guard. Mm. Because I'm always on guard when I'm with him because I don't know when he's going to do something silly. Uh, and then he got me and I, and I, I I left all the way home laughing by myself because I was like, he got me so good. <laughs> like, even though I felt a kid in me saying, no, nah, man, when are you getting back? I was like, <laughs> it was too, you know, when you get slapped like that, it's, I don't know, it was a, it was an emotional moment because it was like, oh man, he got me. But then it was like, oh, I'm proud of him as well at the same time because he got me right off guard. Yeah. Uh, so we had this ongoing battle between us two. But I got him the other day though, but he, I, Scratching my bum, not like you know, over the boxes. Mm -mm. And he dig in your butt. And then I went, oh. smell. And he was playing his uh, DS, DS, uh, no, switch, switch, his switch. And he didn't react because he was still playing. <laughs> then he was like, oh! <laughs> like two seconds later, me and Ash were in tears, bro. <laughs> and then he kept falling for it. Uh, just randomly, I'd go up to him, smell my fingers. <laughs> no, <laughs> what you doing, Sasa? Anyway, bless him. Uh, I love he's that. one of the boys. He's one of the boys. What's funny yeah. is, is he is one of the boys. He is, yeah. and um, we, you know, as uncles, we're still young and in head anyway, mm. in mind. We're gonna have that jokes with him. Yeah, definitely. You know, the girls are gonna be the girls, mm. but he's the only boy. You yeah. know what I'm saying so. He's one of us. Um, and slowly, slowly, we'll introduce him to all the stuff that we love. But he's obsessed with Pokemon right well, now. He loves Pokemon. Loves it. Loves it. Loves it. Which is awesome because. When I was in school, I'm not going to lie, like secondary school, I was into it, mm. like really into it. And obviously now I don't know into it at all, but like I love that he's proper into it. He learned so much about it, watches his videos, he tries to quiz me. So I said, what does someone so ex evolve into? And I'm like, I have no idea these days, man. but I make up names and he's like, no, it's this. And I'm like, all right, cool. So it's funny, man. But I just remember we used to watch it. And I used to run back from school. Even Dwayne used to like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Bob was so, and Squirtle, and yeah, yeah. he was cute, and all that sort of stuff. And I used, to, I used to really enjoy it. So it's nice that he's building a passion of these things. Because I feel like, like, he should, you know? Like, he's one of our, he's one of the boys. We love all that pop culture stuff. So he's going to he's gonna enjoy it. So He will, he will. He's, you've seen he's got into Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, he enjoyed that. He hasn't seen the film. I know. It's just certain scenes and what, like car scenes and stuff. The car scenes, but it was uh, our journey home. And uh, I think I had it playing. And Laura was like, listening to Frozen. Now your feet touching me. And then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, Laura was listening to Frozen. He was listening to Pokemon soundtrack. And I said, guys, can I listen to the soundtrack? while we're driving through traffic and I put on uh, Brothers in Arms uh, by Junkie XL for, from the Mad Max and they loved it, man. Like hearing them, like, this is emotional. Mm. I was like, yeah, man, because this is the scene, isn't it? That was that scene mm. to this day. I, I remember having goosebumps and I every time I even watch it on YouTube, I still get the same goosebumps watching it. 
Uh, such a great song, such a great singing. But yeah, good on him, man. My little nephew, man. Yeah, love him, man. So yeah, it's been good, boys. Yeah. It's been a good week chilling with the kids and whatnot. Um, so yeah, man. Next week I start going back to work, so get back into that routine. But yeah. trying to make an effort to see people, take the misses out, make sure we we catch up, all that sort of stuff. But mm. um, yeah, man. That's the London. You know, at least weather's nice as well. Which yeah, is yeah, definitely. The weather's been good. The weather's been good. All right, man. Let's jump in. Cool. Let's jump in. Well, guys, as usual, we're going to talk about some real world issues now. Uh, we'll be quick about it and stuff, but we do always have to kind of speak up on it. If you want to skip this again, check the description timestamps there. Uh, but as always, we're going to always speak about Free Palestine, Free, Palestine. free Sudan, Free, Free Congo, um, Free many places. But these are sort of places right now going through some hard, hard horrible, times. Horrible. Horrible yeah. sort of times. Again, the mainstream propaganda ne- news or media will never present to you what is really happening. Um, they're always going to paint a narrative. So it really takes your attention away from that. It really takes your emotional sympathy away from those people who need need help. You know, this is real world stuff where people are actually dying. This are lives on the line. It's a, it's very heartbreaking, and it's heartbreaking that the propaganda media, who actually portrays itself as you know world news that helps you know tell people the truth and that and and uh, they've lost know. their accreditation. Yeah, it's right. disgusting. And even investigates investigated journalism. Some of them, like depending on their 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 uh, their ways, again, it's not doing the right thing. You know, you have some certain certain investigated journalism and guys. Again, I keep shouting them out. Breaking points. Check them out on YouTube. Subscribe to them, right? Check Mark Lamont Hill. And then there's so much. You've got Zateo. Yeah, um, and you got the UK one. you got, well, uh, it's called Double Down News. Double Down News. Yeah, yes, Double Down News yeah. is, is so good. So good. And so, like, it's raw, upfront, proper journalism, proper truth, you know, not biased to one side. You know, they always go through both sides of the story. Ex- you know? ex- that's the thing. Yeah. Because if I gave you news that was just pure just one side One-sided, that's yeah. also wrong but when something bad happens on the other side they also bring that up right this is why i listen to these to these guys because they're talking about both sides of the story which, mm. so guys do check them out from our side as, as, you know like guys donate like ways we can help man honestly mm. donate right through at whatever means possible right yes, yeah. spread the message mm. i know it's hard to um you, know, you might think oh what's my following do trust me spread whatever message from you know, whatever you see on, on, on social media, Al Jazeera, whatever, right? And then lastly, you know, boycott. You know, yeah. some things you can't, I get it. Google, right? Mm. Instagram, those big ones, right? Okay, we can't boycott this tough, we're already in, but you can use those platforms to spread messages. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like McDonald's, Coca-Cola, all the fast food chains, Starbucks, fuck those places. Yeah. Like literally they're out of my diet and everything, you know, I'm happy about that, mm. gone, right? Support local businesses, but those places, that's what we could do as as a community to boycott I think those it's, places. It's like I'm I'm noticing it a bit more. Uh, like even when I'm going to like a work event or a screening or something, and I go grab a coffee now, that I make the effort to find somewhere like an individual business Local. that does it. That's not a franchisee like Pret or Starbucks or Costa. That I'm finding, you know, a proper barista place. Uh, and give them my money now, and they deserve it. The local businesses need to thrive as well. I think we've got so used to franchises as well that it's ruining <laughs> other people's businesses. 100%. And these franchises is all part of the empire. I mean, mm-hmm. they've done a great job. I mean, when I say they've done a great job, and this is part of, not that I'm some kind of historical emperor expert, but it's just from my perspective. I'm like, when you're trying to impose your um your the the this empire on the world, mm. they've done a great job with all of these things. So this is what I'm saying. Now it's time to get out. Right, I had to I have to put this out there. Armenia, Armenia is one of the f- few new countries uh, that has recognized Palestine as a state. Right, so many countries out there, like shouts to Armenia. There's many countries doing stuff like, you know, Colombia stopped um their coal trading with Israel. This is what we're gonna have to do. What everyone keeps saying um is is treat Israel like they did South uh, South Africa. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Really exclude them from the world. Um, but it's scary. Look, there might be a big on a further war with Lebanon. I mean, that Yahoo, that terrorist Yahoo, he wants. I mean, the, everyone knows this. Everyone's saying this again from 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 these um, newspapers. Uh, this not mainstream propaganda crap. Yeah, yeah. Saying that his political agenda is to carry on these words because once he's done, he's going to prison. His own country wants him out. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. protests going exactly. on in Israel trying yeah. to get him out. Right. Exactly. So he's doing whatever he can. To continue this war which is why he wanted to have war with iran he's trying to get the u.s involved so much and i'm surprised the u.s have stayed out i mean look they've yeah. done shit they're blowing up yemen and stuff like that which is horrible yemen 
we don't stop talking about the Houthis, man. They've no. blocked the Red Sea since October seventh, like since then. Um, you look with Hezbollah, man. It's been it's a bit scary, bro, because they're saying now, like, because obviously, uh, the uh, the uh, Yahoo is trying to start war with them, mm. and then you know, uh, they're saying if you try us. There is no safe ground in Israel. And we're not playing by the rules. The guy's basically saying, what you've done to Gaza, you play by no rules. So we're not going to play by the rules and no place in Israel is safe. But why would... This is how this is how of a cycle this dude is. He's putting his own people in danger, right? And yeah, they went to war with Lebanon. I can't remember the year, but back then, right? This is a different army now. They think... Everyone thinks like... I'm sorry, man, but yes, they got the backing of the US and the US military and technology and whatever. Yeah. But you're fighting Palestinian Gaza, who is a uh, an army-less country, and you're killing women and children. That's who you're fighting, really. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. You're not tough. Exactly. The they're idea, tough. you're not tough, really. No. Like, right? because you're fighting and killing women and children. That's who your war is. You're gonna war against people who don't have an army. So now you're gonna try and go up against uh, Hezbollah and all these other ones who do have an army, who do have uh, new technology, who's backed up by Iran. Bro, it's scary. Why would he want to do that? But that's what that's how these cycles are. So he wants to start that regional war. It's not going to be as easy. Like let, um, Hezbollah just released the drone footage where they literally got through Israel. And they're like, look, we just exposed all your military side. Your Iron Dome didn't do shit. So like what this guy's such a psycho and, and all his, you know, right wing, whatever, a war journal people, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. all want to do it, putting their people in danger when you got mass protests bro, outside Israel trying to get this fool out, right? But he's trying to keep on. He's literally not just starting a war and it's scary for the Palestinians and Lebanon and the region. It's scary for the innocent people in Israel. And he's yeah, doing yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that insane. cycle, that, that terrorist is doing that for to the innocent people in Israel as well. He's really destroyed Israel. He's done it. Like the whole world don't even want to do business with them. No, 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 that's boycotting right. Boycotting them and the whole they world. They won't let you in the country. Bro, Some of them won't even let you yeah. in, is it? Um, was, Maldives, 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 there's, then, a, there's a list Bangladesh don't let him in wow what has he done to his people he hasn't he hasn't elevated Israel at all by no, no. he has literally he's just, alienated them he even has, more he has he's alienated those them poor even people more. those poor babies that they brainwash or whatnot in Israel the Jewish faith that they that they've hijacked, they've hijacked that, I've they've seen been. recent clips of, of these people shouting at <clears throat> real Jewish brothers and sisters saying how could you say this oh, you're a Jew and that's what they're like I'm a Jew it's like like, it, it, I wish one of them kind of hugged them and said, I'm sorry, like, you, you, you've you been brainwashed. I'm sorry. But trying to hijack the religion of of, of Judaism. It's horrible. Absolutely they, horrible. He's destroyed his his people, man. And I hope, I really don't know what's going to happen because there's all this stuff going on, bro. Man, Putin's visiting freaking the guy in North Korea. Bro, like, there's a whole division in the world now, right? You've got the Western Empire and then you've got the, the BRICS, which is the, the global South and Russia, China. Like, I don't know what's right and wrong. I am not an expert. But what I know yeah. is killing people, which the Western Empire has been doing for the longest time, is not the right way. And what they've done by that is they've alienated themselves from the world. You know what I mean? They've, they've basically shown the world that we're killers. And if you don't listen to what we do, we're going to bomb the shit out of you and kill you. It's not really an ally. It's, it's really they've shown themselves as a bully. But things have changed now. Technology has changed. Like, yeah. Yes, in the 90s, when they destroyed Iraq and all that sort of stuff in like Afghanistan, which was all on fake, right? Because there was no weapons of mass destruction, which news came out after. Times change now. All these countries have nuclear weapons. All these countries have advanced technology weapons. Yeah. So times change, but the US are the only one who's shown they're psycho enough to drop a nuke. The rest mm. of the world hasn't. You want to say, oh, Washington's going to do this, and North Korea guy's going to do this, and Iran's going to do this. They done cool. They might do. We never know, right? But the US has shown that they're the only psychos. To, I'm, I'm saying it straight. That would do it. So that's the scary thing. I think I think that's, that's scary. That's the, that's the problem, because they feel like they're the, the, the empire that does control. I mean, I feel for, I, I genuinely feel sorry for the innocents that uh, have had to endure this and go through this now because there is really people can't go nowhere now. And why wouldn't they feel like that? Because you've got mass media pushing anti-Semitism and all that bullshit. And it's like, I ain't got nothing against you, dude. Like, I've had plenty of conversation with Zionists, bro. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and, and I, this one girl was abusing me about one of my recent videos. And I said to her, like, what has he done for you? You can't go to certain countries, though. You guys are not getting the resources that you used to be able to get from all of the countries that did support you. Now, 
you are this made up country that nobody wants to do anything with. And it's weird that it's taken this long. It's weird it's taken this long. Yeah. I mean, and they're still they're still on it, bro. Muslims. Mm. Muslims this, Muslims that, Muslims that. And I'm like, there was a video that I saw which educated me in the past what couple of thousand years. Ain't no Muslims starting that, man. They say again, people you see that video. I've I don't know if I've seen that video, but I've seen certain clips, especially in the last couple of hundred years. People just want to keep saying Muslims this, Muslim that. If you look at all the world wars, if you look at slavery, if you look what happened in the Congo, if you look all these genocides and stuff, none of them were, were done by Muslims. No. None of them were started by Muslims. In fact, they were all unfortunately, like, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, Europeans mm -hmm. and Americans and whatnot. Yeah. So people, again, this is history that they won't teach you, but this is history that we're learning right now. And this is the beauty of the, the social media and Instagram mm -hmm. and, and Google and all this sort of stuff. You're learning that shit. But you yeah. know, so they couldn't people, erase it, bro. But no, but this the, the reason why I don't this is what I'm trying to say this is the empire where they push that propaganda media. But now I don't like people are learning, people are picking up. Unfortunately, a lot of people have been brainwashed. Yeah, and for yeah. them to change their mind, it's something's gonna happen. I don't know. Like hopefully they see something or whatever it is. But the empire, the Israeli government, they've done whatever they can to make sure they brainwash these people to think Muslims are bad. Muslims, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Western world, Muslims are bad. Da, 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 da. They're starting all the problems. But genocides that be happening, slavery and all this stuff, not, not done by Muslims. Simple as that. And people need to go do your own research. I'm not saying Muslims, like, nothing bad happened. Yeah, they've done some shit, right? People mm. do do shit. But you're talking about in the last couple of hundred years, world wars and all this stuff, nothing to do with us. No, but I'm, no, no, no. I'm older enough now, and unless, like, like I said, even the media got me, bro. Yeah, when yeah, I yeah, was young, after 9 11, bro. Yeah, when I was There's young, I, didn't wanna, with, I, didn't uh... wanna, I don't want people. I, I was Muslim, I didn't do it, but I was kind of like, I don't want to have this conversation. I like, don't, you know what I mean? Like, I kind of like felt a bit, a bit insecure. The media made me feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. The insecure, media did that to me as well. But identity crisis and imposter syndrome, right? I mean, that, <laughs> that, that, that comes from it. Because then you're like, oh man, the guy not, like when they call me Mohammed, what is they going through their head right now? You know, uh, it's a horrible feeling. It's not, it's not nice, and and it's the real, the real part of it. You know, I think I went most of my teenage years not even accepting that I was Bengali. Yeah, that I, you know what, I was kind of like that too. Yeah, I, I messed up. I, that, yeah, I messed up, man. Think... Growing up here, I, I missed out on years of culture that I could have got earlier from my parents now. I mean, we do now. But I went through a period where I couldn't accept the fact that I was Bangladeshi. Yeah. I'll say I mean, it look, now, but... To be fair, though, like, you have to put it in perspective as well. Like, yeah. growing up here has been an amazing experience. I love it. I mm. would never change that. Because I do love this country. I do love the people that I've met. Yeah, when yeah. I love the country. I love, I love like, the environment I grew up in. And then the, you know, the... the, the the so-called vision that the country kind of had, which yeah, was yeah. like bring people together. And yes, they was an empire, British empire and whatnot. And then they brought, you know, people to come into London yeah, yeah, yeah. and UK, sorry, to live together and all that sort of stuff. Right? you got to love that, right? And we benefited from it, you know? Yeah, yeah, we, we did. We did. And you were in a position today because we had the opportunity. So I don't want to denounce any of that sort of no, stuff. No, no, no. The way it not. is now, you know, it's, it's been, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you mm. know, like, some of the culture that we have, I don't know. It's like again, media, the environment, the way, what it pushes for the longest time, man. But now I don't care, man. I'm straight, like, alhamdulillah. Yeah, I'm yeah, in the yeah, office, yeah. Namaz, I'm, I'm gonna do my namaz. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, but we're older now. Also, also, we're older and more mature. Like when I was a teenager, to be honest yeah. with you, I was like, ah, having McDonald's and whatnot. Now I'm like, damn, <laughs> man, it's haram. Why did I do that stuff? So I think there's a part of that growing up as well. That um, plays a big part, but it's accepting who you are. You know that 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 all time question. Who am I? Mm. Who am I? Jackie Chan. Who am I? <laughs> uh, fight scenes in that. It's a very difficult one, but I think people don't accept the fact that. And it's weird. It only came up to me a couple of years ago, and I was like, "I am Kibla. I am what you see, guys. You know, uh, yeah. Same here, man. Do you know what? I think like growing up, I think I have to say like my wife. Maybe your wife done the same thing. Helped me with that too. Like, like, like. I don't like to pull it, but she's helped me accept myself more. And mm. obviously me growing up and whatnot. Like I am in work, for example. I think that's one of the places that I felt very insecure because yeah. uni and college was a bit different. I mean, you were young, I was young, I would do stupid shit that I 
I guess to do shit to get to to be uh, involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, to be honest with you, if I go back in time, I'm not don't, don't do this. Shit. I don't bro, clubs and all that shit. You will find me dead in those places. Like I actually went because everyone went. Right? Yeah. But in work, as I grew up there in the environment, I did the corporate environment with you know corporate people. That was the one place where I always felt like I couldn't really be myself. But now, I don't give a shit, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Now I don't give a shit. And I think being with my wife helped out a lot as well. Um, like, I'm not there to impress anyone. I don't want to go to an event. I don't need to, to whatever. Yeah, when yeah. we are at an event, I'm not trying to be best friends with everyone and be fake conversation. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, generally yeah. leave. But if someone wants to have a conversation about something I might be interested in, be it geek out stuff or UFC. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's talk, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there would be some people. Other than that, I would just leave. Some people would just be there drinking and showing off. And I'm like, this is not for me, man. Um, yeah, that's the problem. Those environments, like that. bro. I... I... I think over the past couple of years, I've accepted the 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 person I am, and yes, that's due to growth, family, and the rest of it. And you know, knowing that I want to be able to have my kids be truthful to me as well in who they are as well. Like I want them to expect that we teach them about our history, we tell them about our grandparents, you know, their grandparents. Uh, but then making time for the right people you mm. know they always say you know you could count your friends in five or in one of your hands mm. and that's very true and like people at work and you guys are some backstabbers things in each other taking drugs oh God. and i'm like i'm not i'm not that guy you know there's morales and doesn't matter even if i was in my 20s i wouldn't be doing half the crazy shit you guys are doing anyway so there is a sense of craziness there but mm. yeah no but, listen what you're saying is, is true and um yeah, well, everything you just said, it doesn't matter what environment, I've seen so much shit. And I think, I, I do think my religion, in what, uh, what my religion, and also the respect I have for dad, who always wanted to keep us like straight and narrow because mm. of he, dad, like, he, he's a big inspiration of keeping straight and narrow as well. One, it was like, if I do something wrong, man, he's going to be like, holy, I can see his face, bro. But in two, just out of respect for him, man, I couldn't let him down because no, of course, of course, dad's course, always been course. straight and narrow. He's lost so much friends because all of them went dodgy ways. But one thing dad can be proud of, no matter what struggles he went through and needed money and whatever it is, like, I work three jobs before I go off the course, basically. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 and, exactly. You know, Dad never even opened up a business because, like, a restaurant business, one because everyone wanted to sell alcohol. He's like, no, I'm not getting involved in no alcohol business. Even right. like, you know what I mean? Like, Dad's always been on that straight and and on on that straight path, and I, I, I respect that as well. So it kind of took me off it, but I'm not perfect, dude, man. I've done some fucked up shit, but I'm trying to keep straight. Yeah, no, uh, no, that's the main thing. But um, that's the main thing. But yeah, look, guys, like, you know. As always, guys, spread the message. Don't stop talking about Palestine, Sudan, Congo. Congo. Spread that message. Whatever information you find, spread it. Trust mm. me, you can educate anyone. Donate if you can. Penny, pound, whatever it is, man. Donate whatever you can to those causes. And boycott where you can. Trust yeah. me. Boycott. 100%. Check out the links on our Instagram and TikTok page. Uh, and do what you can, guys. Free Palestine, free Sudan, free Congo. That's it. All right. Moving on, uh, we lost a legend in Donald Sutherland this week. He yes. passed away at 88. A legend in, in the movie industry. I mean, he's been Massive around for break. multiple decades. Yeah. Um, you know, sad to, sad to, when I say sad, I mean, I, you know, I, I think about Kiefer Sutherland because I'm a fan of him as well. Yeah. He left his father. Yeah. I think about that movie Nick of Time when they were in, uh, I said Nick of Time again, Time to Kill. Time to Kill, yeah. When they were in a movie together. I mean, I, they've know, done a few, luckily. Uh, yeah. There's another one called Forsaken, it's like a Western that they did together. But I mean, I mean, let's like, yeah, tribute to, we're going to play tribute to some of his movie catalogs and, and whatnot. I mean, he, he won some awards as well, right? Yeah, he did. He did. He did. He got a lifetime achievement from Akadumi, Akadu, uh, the Academy Awards. <laughs> And uh, he's got a couple of Emmy Awards and Golden Golden Globe Awards. He never got nominated for an actual Oscar, which I think he should have. I think when he played President Snow in the Hunger Games, I think he was absolutely awesome in that. But to be honest, this guy's catalogue of movies, bro, you talk about uh, Backdraft, A Time to Kill. The original uh, Dirty Dozen. The original Dirty Dozen. He's in, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Lock Up with Sylvester Stallone. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, bro. Oh, yeah. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ad Astra, Fallen with Denzel Washington, JFK with Kevin Costner. Bro, it just, the list is massive, bro. Uh, Cold Mountain with Nicole Kidman, Jude Law, uh, The Eagle with, uh, uh, was it Tanim? Tanim? Tanim Tatum. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, bro, we could go. Horrible bosses. Horrible, ho- where is it? horrible bosses. Yeah. Uh, but it's massive. The, the, look, I, I can't. We could go through this for ages, bro. He's Kelly's Heroes, bro. He was in the original Kelly's Heroes. Multiple decades and he, like amazing movies throughout the whole whole whole, whole time. Uh, his he's whole time. Man, Donald Sutherland, Keith, Keith, uh, sorry, Donald Sutherland, Clint, Clint Eastwood. Eastwood. Oh my God, this yeah, he he's uh, he. Listen, man, like. You know when you see somebody's uh, face come up on the screen, you, you, it always lights up, right? Mm. And like you know, the the tribute I read from Kiefer Sutherland when he announced that his part, his dad passed away, was like that he loved what he did, mm. and he got to do the things that he loved. Bro, I I actually kind of felt it because you you hear that from a son knowing that his dad really fully enjoyed what he did for his life, and. And that he had a life, he lived a, a good life. That's it, yeah. I think that's, it was the illness he was facing. Though, yeah, right? that's right. I mean, 88 is, a, is, is you know, it's, it's great. That's, you know? amazing. that's um, amazing. 88 is, is you know, at least just not too young, which unfortunately some people do and whatnot. But 88 is lived a legacy, the legacy of movies behind. Yeah. He's one of those guys that well, in the future, you pick up a movie, you pull it on, you're like, oh, Donald Sutherland's in this. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Or you pick up a movie that you enjoy and you're like, yeah, Donald Sutherland's in this. Like, yeah, yeah. This, this is this what I'm saying. He's always going to leave that legacy behind no matter what. Uh, and I think his son, you know, Stephen Sutherland, who will have his own legacy, yeah. but just will just always remind you of, of the legacy that his, his father left. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Uh, a Time to Kill, another great film. Kelly's Heroes is another good one. I know Dad was Dad's a big fan of that and the Dirty Dozen. Uh, the Hunger Games. Now, I'm not a big fan of the movies, but he was great in it. Mm. Uh, I don't know, man. Did you ever get into the Hunger Games? I watched, I think I watched one, um, the first one. And yeah. Not for me. Not for me. Um, it's a, it's a, I found it a bit of a tough watch, but uh, he was in the Italian job, the remake, Forsaken, which is with Kiefer Sutherland as well. All right, bro, look, man. You can't the, the the level of work that this guy has got is insane. Like the guy worked like he there's a there was a quote I just saw recently on Instagram about he thanks the people he played in those roles to see his life in a different perspective. When you play so many characters, mm-hmm. could you spend maybe six months to two years in that role? You're that person, right? Mm. Even though you try and you go in and out, but some people are in, bro. Yeah, you know. So you live that person, that fictional character's life when you're on a movie set, when you're doing a scene, stuff like that. So, no nah, respects, respects to him. Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll end up putting one of his movies on very soon. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I mean it's crazy that it was in that. Yeah. I was just thinking of like, good luck up keeps showing up on my Amazon, like. I was thinking like, so that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that yeah, that should be one of our retro movies. Yeah, let's do it. He's going to be in that, yeah. man. Um, but yeah, look, condolences to his family. Um, but, you know, all respects to this legend. Um, yeah. Another legacy. Um, gone, but rest in peace to Donald Sutherland. Yeah, rest in peace. And um, one quick other sad news. And I just thought I'd mention this just because it was part of the Simpsons who I grew up with. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, her name is Nancy McKenzie. The oh. voice of Marge Simpson passed away at 81. Oh. Now, I can't say I know her or whatnot, but out of respect for the Simpsons. Oh. Uh, and, you know, she's a big part of that, obviously playing Marge. I think she played a lot of voice actors. Oh, she, did, stuff, she, did, she did, she did, she did, she did. You know, rest in peace to her, condolences to her family. Yes. Um, You know, Simpsons was a big part of my life. I send Dwayne clips now. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's why I'm Dwayne's sort of conversation of, because we used to love Simpson and Homer. When Homer was in his prime, oh my God, we used to die, bro. And I just send him little clips of Homer Simpson just doing his That's funny really things. So, you know, rest in peace to Nancy McKenzie. Cool. Oh, bless. And all right, guys. Well, look, moving on to things we watched and The Boys, season four. So I haven't watched episode four yet, so let's not talk about that. I've seen episode one to three. Now, this show... I, for me, it never fails. Like I, I think they've been for me personally consistent. Kept it consistent. Now, mm. the audience score apparently is the lowest it's ever been for all of the seasons. I think some things people are upset about what happened with Frenchie uh, and whatnot, but also like I think some people are saying, and you said this as well. It's like you kind of knew from yeah. the first couple of seasons that he was, you know, bisexual. And whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in this one, they came straight out and everything. So I think some people are already like, what, what the hell's going on? Uh, I was a little bit thrown away on how. I, I guess what I was falling away was like they got straight into it basically. It's like, oh, what? Oh, right. That was they didn't, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no build up to it. So I was like, oh, when did this ha- happen? 
But there was that. And I think, I don't know why everyone else is kind of hating this so far. Not hating it, sorry, but the score's a bit low. But listen, this show, I don't know how it gets away with the violence and the sexual shit. There's that one scene, but it was banned in some, some countries, bro. How do they get away with that, bro? And who thinks about it? Who's the writer? I know Seth Rogen and them are involved. But who's the writer who's like, oh, you know what? We should do with this guy. <laughs> we should do a scene like this. And I'm like, who writes that? And who's like, yes, that's a great scene. Let's do it. And then they film it. And how do they get away with it on TV? But what has TV come to, bro, when it's straight up porn, bro? It's like, like... You know what I mean? That's like straight up porn for a second on TV or whatnot. It was, it was grimy. Like me and Ash were watching it. And this is a show, like, you know, if someone busts through the door, normally you just pause it, right? This is a show where you like turn off the TV until this person turn leaves. Out. You don't know what scene's coming next. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and the violence and the goriness. I mean, look, they've been getting away with this, but bro, I bro, I am enjoying it, man. It's I mean, good, bro. It's I, grounded. I, I think it's really grounded. I yeah, I think it take superhero storytelling to a different real life uh, kind of experience. Because you're like, well, what if the soups are doing all of this crazy shit, bro? And the government are involved and all sorts of shit, which, you know, we live in a time now where our government is joke. But, and I, I feel like it's been there for ages, bro. It's just, we never saw it. I think as we've grown older, as because of what's happening in the world right now, we, we're so much more connected to it. We understand that some of these people are jokes, man. And they get away with all sorts of shit, bros. All sorts of shit. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Because I was saying it to Ash the other day. Yeah. <clears throat> all these people that Homelander just kills, what the hell's happened to them? Like, what happened to their families? Like, yeah. what happens? Like, they get away with so much shit. But I think, I think one thing I, I noticed from Gen V, which yeah. is like, this universe, I didn't see Gen V. Oh, you didn't see? You should have watched it. You should watch I it. Need to, I still need to you watch it. You should watch it, bro. Okay. I, I was just like, this universe is fucked up. How come there's no good people? How come mm. everyone's fucked? up in this there's no good soups and yes there, there are there are but what i'm saying is like where's the the equivalent of the good soups of the seven who are like i know the bullshit i, I know you got starlight and it's the boys but mm. where's the other soups that like we're gonna stop homeland or whatnot it's a fucked up universe man but i can already see what's happened this is my prediction at the end okay. of season five this is my prediction i think the young boy is going to be the one that kills homelander i think because the young oh. boy was brought up with his mother, a human, right? He's got that human element. Now, Homelander's doing whatever he can to corrupt this young boy. So you saw what happened when he, you know, killed that dude. Homelander's just, he's lost it all. No yeah, 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 yeah. All. exactly. Kill yeah. anyone, whatever, right? Yeah. So he's trying to teach his son that way, but you can see in his son that he, he was brought up by a human. I love yeah, him, yeah, 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 his yeah, mother. Yeah. Even though he hates Butcher, but they had that little moment with Butcher. He realized Butcher's dying. He, Butcher's a human. Butcher loved his mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a feeling... The turn of this of this season might be the son, um, mm -hmm. turning joining the boys, um, and then I think by the end of season five, I reckon he's going to be the one that finally stops Homeland. I feel like he's the only one that can because he's Homelander's son. Um, that's my that's my theory. That's my thoughts right now. Uh, I would kind of like to see that because I don't want to see that kid corrupt. Actually, generally, yeah, I want to see, see that him kid turn good. Like, yeah. I don't want him to be corrupt. I think he's too pure. And what you went through in that episode, and wait till you get to episode four. Oh, good. Like, I've already seen 10 minutes of it, and I was like, oh, it scares me. Uh, it's good. It's very good. I Listen, bro, they haven't messed up in any way. They've, it's kept me engaged. It's the, char right? the characters are really good. Uh, I've grown with the characters as well in the, in the seasons we've got. Uh, after what happened in season three, like, I just want more of this, and I want it longer. I don't know why. I want them to be like like long movie hours now. Like forty minutes an hour is not enough no more now. It yeah. is. What well, is that? They're an hour episode. So an episode. Yeah. I just felt like it wasn't enough, bro. Mm. But uh, Carl Urban, love him. Awesome. Don't need to see him come back as Dread too. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's so brilliant as Butcher Man. Yeah. Uh, he's got this. Uh, he's really lived this character. Yeah. And he's really gone for it. Uh, but you know what he's I know he's a dick but when he was talking to mother's milk mother's milk yeah and he was telling him in, I can't remember the exact thing but he's like I know I'm harsh but I know what's right to do to, to force to survive yeah yeah that's yeah, why yeah, he's a yeah. dick that's why he's a dick yeah. like that's why he like he comes across as a dick but he goes I just know that that's that's the way that we have to do it True. because remember they almost died by Willos multiplicity Willos out guy yeah 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 yeah, um, yeah. 
And he knew from the beginning, let's just snatch the bitch yeah, and yeah. Then would interrogate or whatnot. But because they didn't do that, he knew what was going to happen. Like, he just knows. He's a st- strategic guy in he that is, sense. Yes. Uh, but he comes across a dick as a dick. And he told Mother's Milk, like, that's why I do it. Um, but Mother's Milk is great. He's taking up a leadership role and whatnot. He looks so Mother's different. Milk. Is that what they call him? That's his name in it, right? Mother's Milk, isn't it? I've never noticed that. Well, his name is Mother's Milk. <laughs> um, he, um, three seasons. Yeah. <laughs> He looks so different. People were actually convinced that it wasn't him. The, the yeah, because of the mustache. Yeah, and his face looks so slim and whatnot. Hold up, man. How no. have I been watching the boys? His name is Mother's Milk. How? How is this possible? No, I didn't know that, bro. No. The boy is Mother's Milk. Best of Mother's Milk? No, bro. Yeah, man, look. That's his name. How do they call him Mother's Milk? It must be. It's obviously a code name, right? <laughs> no yeah, way. he looks very different because he took his beard off. Yeah. But he looks so different, bro. Yeah, he does. He does. He took the beard off. He's wicked, though, bro. I love his hip hop t shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah he always wear the hip hop t shirts. Oh, yeah, bro. Wow. Much. He loves yeah. weight, man. Yeah. No mother. Milk. I think pop, some people say, did, did he turn ill or something like that? And I don't know. <clears throat> well, I hope he's all right, man. Yeah, I know. I don't think it is anything. I think it's just. He took the beard off and he's in good shape anyway. Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. Thin yeah. face. Bam. Yeah, the beard can put the extra. No, nah, man, he's lost weight, bro. Yeah, he definitely lost weight. He's lost weight. Anyway, listen, <clears throat> bro, he's jokes. Mother's milk. You learned something new the whole time, bro. Mother's milk, bro. That is jokes, bro. Okay, good show. Great show. I'm looking forward to watching season episode four probably tonight if uh, Ash has the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the boys, check it out, guys. Freaking awesome. Don't watch it with. Kids or parents in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't do that. Never do that. Do that. Um, <sighs> the other thing I started watching was Sweet Tooth season three. I haven't started that yet. Yeah, I, I was planning to watch it in Dubai. I was like, ah, oh, you know, I've got a bit of time. I'll watch it here. And well, he, it's wicked. I love it. Like, it's wicked. I don't know if they shot that season all together because they all look the same. Like the kid doesn't look like he's grown up or, at all. Probably. Uh, yeah. But he's such a loving kid. I don't know what it is. He's such a hopeful kid. Like there's little hope in him. Uh, the way he, you know, when they meet new people and immediately there's a trust issue, issue yeah. with the people and whatnot, the new people they met, he is able to kind of immediately build trust with these people, but just by introducing himself and just by see, being a sweet, sweetheart or whatnot. Uh, I mean, look, obviously he's like the chosen one. He was the first hybrid. Yeah. Sure. Born, I think first born hybrid. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, a lot of people think, you know, the first two seasons, like he's the cure. Uh, to stop this the disease that's going on to killing people and as well as the hybrid. There's this new big bad in this okay. that we're learning as well, who, you know, has the same perception and whatnot that can cure the disease and, and have real babies now rather than hybrids and stuff like that. You know, they at the end of the last season they were gonna make the journey to at uh at La- um what is it? Alaska. Alaska, yeah. To meet his mother, whose right. mother thinks she had to cure. There's this whole thing going on now. There's more story, backstory right there as well. Okay. Big man's in it, always the protector. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I, I don't know what it is, man. I really enjoy watching it, and it has me really engaged, um, Actually, this show. So The first two seasons did the same thing to me. It was just his sweet character and what was going on as well, and the way he is with his encounters. Mm. And I think that the humanity in that is different, right? Yeah. The humanity in the way he is, he is who he is. And you got to see the harsh reality of this show as well, because these hybrids are children, right? These hybrids are children, and these organizations, these adult men, are, they don't give a shit. When it comes to survival, when it comes to this disease and looking after their own, they don't care if they're humans. I know they're hybrids and whatnot, but in the day they're half human, half animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still human. There is no resentment for that. They've dehumanized them a lot. I mean, this is okay. Well, look, they are half animal. But when you talk about that phrase dehumanization, we do that to each other as human beings. Exactly. We see what's happening to Palestine now. Exactly. But this is a pure example of doing it to the full extent. Extinct. But you made the kids half or half human anyway, half animal, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like the the grown adult in these shows, like who want to do whatever they want with the kids, just have no remorse. It's, evil, it's disgusting. It? But there is unfortunately evil in that world right now, which is that Yahoo over there who's a child killer. Um, but yeah, sorry, I had to bring that up again. Sorry. But yeah. the show, no, the show has that dark element to it, man, because you don't get, <clears throat> this show doesn't have the violence, the swearing, 
the nudity, right, which expresses the darkness of the world. This show, because the kids, man, and they're, 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 they they kind of look kind of silly. If I, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if I walked into you watching and I wasn't interested, I'd be like, bro, what are you, what are you watching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of weird, right? But, it, it, um, it, it, you know, they look kind of silly and it looks kind of silly, but it expresses the darkness of that part of the, the world, world that you know, world, and that yeah. and that uh, us yeah. human beings, you know, how dark we can be just well, yeah, exactly. our own survival exactly. and stuff yeah, like that. Exactly. Um, great show, bro. I really enjoy it. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing. I didn't even know it was out, bro. It, you know, it came out when I was in Dubai, and I was like, I'll watch it when I get back. But I'm trying. I still got my chance. Like advertisement, like season one and two got. Netflix well, that, we don't have Netflix no more. So we used to log into Netflix all the time. Uh, so that's why you don't have it. In the other house, they got it. So I go into Netflix. I'm like, oh shit, it's on. So that's uh, probably what it is. Yeah, I don't have Netflix either. Well, I mean, look, that's a great show, guys. If you haven't seen seen Sweet Tooth, check it out. Uh, you know, watch episode one, season one, see what you think. But it's I based on a DC it. comic book. DC, yeah, yeah. I don't even know that. Awesome, yeah. cool, man. With that, look, because I'm here, I don't really have time to. I haven't had time to watch anything at all. So that's all I've watched. Have you seen anything else during the week? No. Apart from Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap, man, I'm loving it. I'm almost finishing season one. Looking forward to jumping into season two. I'm, I'm, I'm in deep now, but it's a nice, easy watch as well. It's not too complicated. Uh, I'm starting to like the characters and I started to appreciate what Sam Beckett went through mm. and what's, what Al as a best friend had to go through. Like, you, you know, you watch those programs and you, as a kid and as a teenager, you don't really take on the adult vibe of what they've, what they're actually going through. Like, you know, sometimes when he was leaping, he didn't sleep. Mm. Man was just jumping into the next person's body and he had to start a mission. Yeah. Uh, but that amount of good he did along his journey, you know, he never really took that much credit in it and 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 that he kept on going. It's insane, bro. Like, willpower is something else, but knowing that you're doing that type of work. But, oh, man, emotional. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it, bro. I'm yeah. really enjoying it. But, yeah, that's it, bro, for me. Nothing else much. Nothing cool. Much. Cool. All right. Well, I, I wasn't being rude. I was just researching yeah. the next topic and whatnot. Um, but let's move on to the news. Uh, we're starting off with some MCU news. Marvel is releasing a podcast. Yeah, I saw that, bro. June 26. That and... means everybody's podcast is dead. Well, I don't know about that. I Finish. don't know about that. I don't know that. Because you're getting one Finish. perspective. Don't forget, bro. We, like, you know, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Fat Man Beyond, our podcast, many. We talk about not just MCU, but we talk about all our podcasts. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, you, bro, do have, sort of you do subscribe. have, like, specific MCU podcasts. But I think this will be different. I think this is, like, digging deep into... Celebrating all the latest across the Marvel Universe, movies, TV shows, and comics directly from Marvel. All right, cool. I'm surprised they haven't done one before. But I'm trying to see. I think it comes out June 26. It'll be interesting. I'm not saying that I'm going to listen to it because there's so much shit to listen to. Like, Rogan is my go-to. Like, yeah. He's my number one, right? And I know I've, I, I, you know, certain things, people don't might not like him. I don't agree with him on a lot of shit, especially when he talks about Israel, Palestine. Like, he's trying to be in the middle, but kind of not. I don't know. But <clears throat> what I'm saying is I don't know if I'll have time to listen to this, but I will check it out. I think I will check out episode one if I can. Um, I'm I'll sure check it, out, it definitely. comes out on all streaming platforms. Um, so guys, check out Marvel's podcast. It'll be interesting though. It'll be interesting if they start talking about theories because they're going to know inside stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would it be That's interesting on right. them geeking out about our possible theories of where the movie can take us? And Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, do, Would they show like Easter eggs that pe- we might have missed or would they talk about characters that they love and emotions like how did how was it going to be is it going to be a structured podcast or is it going to be a geek out podcast yeah, you know yeah. what i mean like you know what i'm trying to say um it'll be interesting the way it takes if it's a very structured thing i might not be attracted to it but if it's like two like genuine fans who were like bro did you see that part and you know you think you guys missed it so hopefully it's watching. fans doing it fans yeah. yeah that are working with marvel and they do each episode with different fans get us on man Oh my god, that was Marvel good. Disney, hook us, hook us, hook a brother up, hook the brothers up. We'll come out on that episode and we'll talk about comic books and movies all day long. Hell yeah, yeah, Hell yeah. Long. Looking forward to that. I'll check it out. I'll check it out too. Uh, cool. One other thing that came up, uh, or another thing with the MCU, are they looking to recast the Black Panther in the MCU? The late great Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace, you know, iconic character. I'm talking about a historical character for. Like, listen, all immigrants, all people, right, who are different or whatnot, but this was the Black Panther, the African king. Yeah. Like, they've done it properly. I believe they've done it properly. He meant so much. 
They did. And yeah. obviously he passed away. But you know, all respect and love to Chadwick Boseman. Black Panther is is what means a lot to people. And I yeah. think it's important to keep that character going. Now they done Black Panther two. They paid a big tribute to Chadwick Boseman. They set it up for his son to be Black Panther as well, right? So that could be because I think the rumors or the or the thoughts are after Secret Wars, be it they reboot the MCU universe or the multiverse, you get in a different characters from different multiverses or whatnot. You could have a Black Panther coming in from a different multiverse or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's, you know, I, I think they should. Look, all love to Shiri as well. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. That's a great movie, bro. And I think Shiri plays a, a big role in the Black Panther universe, even in the comics. You know, she's got her own line in the comic books now. So, uh, recast is something, yeah, definitely, that they need to introduce. I think it'd be great. I think, I think so. We're not. I, I want to see Black Panther maybe you know, Storm, you know, I want to see those relationships. I want to see, you know, these are the little things like, I'm not talking about we need a male Black Panther. I'm not, I don't talk about that. I'm talking about certain storylines that you could do. Yeah, 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 yeah. We want to see. And I think it's important to have that, that role model on the character, of a character on the big screen as well, like as a male role model as well. Not just, just a female one, which we got now, we got Siri, but I get the male one up there too. You know what I mean? And when I say role model, I'm just saying some people that kids can look up to, man. Like you got to, you can't forget like, they're like, Yes, we want the whole diversity and whatnot, but I do want a male someone to look up to. And I just like, oh, because I look up to the females as well. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, it, you know, some people could be very emotional about it. I hope that they do the right thing and sure pay respects to his to Chadwick Boseman and I'm his sure family, and I'm sure you know, let them know that this is what we're planning to do. You know, but it'll be our all love for Chadwick Boseman, and I I'm pretty sure Chadwick Chadwick. Uh, Chadwick would have wanted it too because I think exactly, he understood he understood the, the the importance of the character having that character there bro that's so important bro. so important no good 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 on them if they do it looking for who do you think oh that's that's a tough one I don't know if you ask me right now I have, I have no idea man because I can't help but put Chadwick Boseman's face in my head so I have to really that's like, like an take automatic it out. thing isn't it yeah like he's that for life don't get me wrong but you have to think about who can who could do it there's many people out there that can you know, I, I just I just don't know off the top of my head, man. I'm yeah. sure they'll do a great job wood wood casting. Whoever they Marvel get, they're gonna smash it. That. They'll get somebody good on that, definitely. For sure. All right. Um the other MCU new new uh, MCU news was uh Ryan Goslin recently said that he would love to play Ghost Rider. Yeah, yes, and that's that sparked off a lot of rumors and all this sort of stuff, but he said that he would love to do it. And I think he'll do a great job. I think the guy from Walking Dead, I forgot his name. Darryl. Darryl, yeah, yeah. Darryl, well, yeah. I mean, in Walking Dead, his name is Darryl. Yeah. I never find his name. But Ned Sutton. Yeah, Ned Flanders. Ned, no Ned, Ned Dilly <laughs> Dilly Dilly. Ned Darryl. Darryl. Walking Dead. Darry Dixon. Oh, no. Dar Darryl. Yeah, Darryl Dixon. Dixon. Darryl, Darry Dixon, bro. Darryl Dixon. Darryl yeah. Dixon. Oh, Darryl, yeah. He's good. He looks it. <laughs> He's getting old, bro. <laughs> Whatever you get Ned from. Uh, um, I don't know. Oh, that's the, from the boys. Yeah. Gosling would do a great job. Daryl would do a yeah, great yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keanu Reeves would have done a great, jo Oof. great job. Um, I mean, Ghost Rider is a big one. Like, he's another big one, right? And they've done a great job with Nicolas Cage. I think that movie was fine, right? But bro, you know what? Okay, that first one was fine. The second one, the visuals were good, bro. Yeah. The one with Idris. I can't remember. Re Revenge or something. Uh, a lot of plot. The visuals, bro. Yeah. Was sick, bro. They like, they... I, I felt like it went from that you know hollywood colors to something grounded in the second one mm. and i think dad had it on 3d right i think so yeah, yeah I, I watched it in 3d and i was like this is decent man. like it's a good it's a good watch man i think people like i think since we've got into the world of movies people uh they're like kim do you love everything and there's something that went out recently that uh, i think it's like a viral clip of kevin smith saying why am i going to put my energy in saying something's bad and shit over somebody else's work. Like, if I didn't enjoy it, I'd have to tell the whole world I didn't enjoy it. Mm. I enjoyed it just because I enjoyed it. It's me watching it. Like, I want to get away from this world, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, yes, I do love everything. Not everything's great. But what did I see recently that just didn't... But it just, I don't have to say... It's energy to say bad things about it, man. It's very... I, man, I'd be lucky enough to be making a movie, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? It's a, it's hard work regardless. 
criticism, constructive feedback is great. You know, I could say, you know what? The movie looks good, man. It's too long. Yeah. Yeah, you could cut, you know, a bit here, there. That's fine. But I wouldn't... If it still gave me an amazing feeling, like, you know, after we came out of Bad Boys, bro? Mm. Bro, the cinema was buzzing, bro. That's, that's... I mean, that was a good movie. I no, mean, it was a good movie, movie but then it's yeah. not... Like I said, like, in my honest review was that it's not an amazing story. Oh, no, no. It's standard, right? It's, it's standard, standard, bro. Yeah. It's a standard uh, Hollywood action... It's their relationship. It's their MVP moment with Reggie. Mm. You know, like, those those moments, like, that make the movie. The soundtrack, you know. Shouts to Lorne for, for, for sharing our clip and the soundtrack. You smashed it. And I just found that. Soundtrack? Really? Yeah. What? Uh, the composer. Uh, he shared one of our videos. For talking about the Bad Boys soundtrack? No, I think it was me and Ash on the Bad Boys point. And... Oh, yeah, sick, yeah. sick, sick. Uh, he's do... I just found that he's doing Axel Foley, bro. Oh, the soundtrack for that? Yeah. Oh, awesome. I was like, man, that's a great catalogue. Like, you know what? Shout out. I've got to do an episode where we shout out composers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We should do a retro, like, skip the retro movie reviews with retro, like, composer review or something like that. Like, think of something. Like, you know, one episode or whatever, because there's some great composers out there. And you've got to think about, like, we've said this before, and I think, for me, Hans Zimmer's done this the best for me personally, but loads of other con- uh, uh, soundtrack uh, conductors have done it for they play a big part in the music of the movie bro yeah like, they tell the story yeah. with music they tell the part they tell the scene be it action romance emotional someone dying look what Hans Zimmer did with time bro look what he did not... Last Samurai I'm sorry yeah, bro, like, my... no, Last Samurai is the one but what he did with time was everybody knows what scene that is with mm. time he knew what everybody knows what that scene that is but with Last Samurai, like that's my go-to soundtrack, bro. Oh, by far. Like, I put that on my headphones everywhere I go. Great. Like, yes. Go on, like I mean, what do you know? I've been having some beef, not beef, but Aaron had a uh, Aaron Aaron J watches, who's on TikTok and Instagram. Make sure you check him out. He's another fellow friend and fellow. Uh, uh, he does reviews as well, and he, he's one of his favorite films is The Last Samurai. So we always have a, a ongoing banter about it. But somebody got him in the comments, and they were like, "How's Tom Cruise The Last Samurai?" Blah blah blah, white man saves everything. Oh, and I was like, me and him were in the comments, and like he he sent me the comment. He was like, gives what I do. I was like, educate him, bro. Oh, yeah, educate him because I think that's what people need to do. Yeah, I think the market. I mean, listen, yeah, the whole like, Dave Chappelle was the first one. Remember that skit with uh? That's where it came from. Yeah, yeah. What's the name? Um, Paul, Paul Rooney. Paul Rooney. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, he's got a fucking point. He did sure. have a point. Yeah. But put that aside the movie is fucking fantastic it's a fantastic Let, film bro. put that part aside okay i get that all that rubbish yeah. right cool the movie and the character and then the soundtrack man you, bro, i don't know what, what did he say i don't want to say the words but he would i think it was like they oh, the, wait the movie. imagine with tom hanks with yeah the last, the last, last n word on, on earth starring tom hanks because <laughs> <laughs> he was like this is typical hollywood bullshit always the last save the white man savior tom cruise last summer right Brad Pitt, the Mexican, <laughs> let's make <laughs> the last N word alive, sorry, Tom Hanks. <laughs> it was so good. And the two white women next to him were so uncomfortable. <laughs> oh my God, what a great You skit. know what? I need to find that. You know bro. what, man? I'm going to try and find that skit and pull it into the podcast here. So yeah, bro. That is. Hold on. Well, we should watch it now, actually. And see hold on, hold on. Let me find it. Do a, do a reaction to it. Because it's freaking. Post- what is it, Les? No, N word, man. Yeah. I can't say your word, man. You try to get me in trouble. No, no, sorry, sorry. You know sorry. the word. Don't try to get me in trouble, bro. <laughs> no, but what did he call it? The last N. On Earth. On Earth. Let's see what comes up. Paul Looney, right? Yeah. He is a great comedian, man. He was awesome. He was a great. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Samurai centers around Tom Cruise, a Civil War veteran who goes to Japan and Look teaches face. the Emperor's He's not impressed. <laughs> Shut down. I was offended by the, I mean, Hollywood is crazy. The Last Samurai starring Tom Cruise. He's the Last Samurai. Give me a break. That movie was offensive. I mean, Hollywood is crazy. At first, they had the Mexican with Brad Pitt, and now they got the Last Samurai. Tom Cruise. Well, I've written a film. Maybe they'll maybe they'll produce my film. The Last Nigger on Earth starring Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the part, but I'll do some. 
It's so true though. He's not the boss. Um, he's not wrong. 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 It's, not wrong. it's freaking hilarious. But the movie, you've got to watch the movie to like, oh, appreciate it. For what yeah, it exactly. Uh, exactly. And appreciate the soundtrack and all. How did we get to that movie though? Right? We were talking about um, what movie was we talking about? We've lost it. No, no the news. We're talking the about news. the news. The news was. Uh, Ryan Gosling was going to play Ghost Rider, but we ended up <laughs> sidetracking. All right, cool. Anyway, continue. all right, well, let's continue with the news and then we'll finish off. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> The Rock. All right, so moving into other news. The Rock production company, Seven Bucks Productions, signed a deal with Disney. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what that means. Um, they probably get some... That's probably because of the live-action Moana, right? Yeah, so I doubt it's like Marvel. Right? Remember, Disney's no, no. a big, you know... That's going to be included. That's with Moana and stuff. I think yeah. they'll have like two movies, three movies in the go. Yeah. Uh, so Seven Bucks is right up them. I do not want mm -hmm. him to play Apocalypse. I've seen the images go out. I've seen people doing stuff. That... Just leave it. He doesn't. They need somebody else fresh. Do a CGI thing. Right? Yeah, 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 they can do. Yeah, yeah. Do that like what they did with like Thanos. Yeah. Find another actor, good voice. He'd be fine. I don't need The Rock as what do you call it. The Rock is fine. Don't get me wrong, man. He's fine. He's on the list, though. He's not the people's champ. He's not, He's the, not the champ. Rock. Yeah. Listen, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Muhammad Ali will always be the people's champ. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Rock. You're not the people. I love. I do love the Rock. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. not the people's champ because I'm sorry. Yeah. He's on He's, he's, on, He's on that list. list. Yeah. All um, right. Yeah. So yeah, let's not get into that. Uh, Peaky Blinders movie. Ke uh, Kellyanne Murphy says this is one for the fans. Kellyanne Murphy. That's a Killian, new one. Kellyanne. 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 Kellyanne Murphy. Well, I can't find it. My guy. That's a new way, bro. But I finally said a name. You finally, I finally said a name kind of right. You kind of said it, but yeah. sorry, I was like, you know, he did it, but I was like, no, man. Lose, man. So close, though. Listen, Peaky Blinders must be awesome. I, I, I never it. got into I watched never season one it. because I really wanted to watch it, and I just couldn't continue. I don't know why. i got to try and get back to it, but it's supposed to be awesome. Season one was pretty good. It, I just wasn't 100%. So this is based it. about gangsters in... I think Manchester or North or something. No, all right, okay. So, oh. you know, I think, uh, what's the name? Uh, Tom Hardy was Isn't in it. it, yeah. Killian Murphy, Kellyanne Murphy is fucking A class anyway. He and is, he's he is. in it, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. I'll check it um, out definitely. All right, last thing with the news is uh, Capcom are revising, reviving some classic Marvel games, man. Marvel vs. Capcom games. Uh, whole X Men Children, I, X Men Children of the Atom. Let's see if I've got all the list, man. I want to list them all because, it, boy, this is exciting. You know, I was playing the other ones. I've got all of them, yeah. You got all of them, yeah? Yeah, it's on my little device, isn't it? Yeah, Allah, I deleted the thing. Uh, but you're talking about X-Men, Children of the Atom, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvel Superheroes, X-Men, Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, The Punisher, which I've never played. I so, played it, bro. It's yeah, jokes, Is bro. it good, yeah? I'm, I'm... I was on it for like an hour, bro. I almost so... clocked it and then battery died. Oh, I lose. The thing, device saves it, but <clears throat> all that heart that went into it, you know, it was like, it's basically Streets of Rage with The Punisher, bro. Yeah, that's so what it looks You get like. the moments where you pick up weapons, you beat up people. The bosses are bloody hard. One of the bosses... Really pissed me off, bro. <laughs> like I, you know, when you do three continues, bro. Oh no! When you go through three continues on a on a boss, you should just leave it. I continued, man. I think I got up to five continues. Then, then you know, so in between, so my guy killed me like twenty times, bro. Oh, it's big about it. It's free life, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh died. <laughs> continue. Uh, 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 died. Continue. Uh, uh. Like this boss was. Who was anyone bro. I'm familiar with or something? No, no. So the the game is based on. A street level game based on him finding Kingpin um, mm. and Kingpin uh, trying to cut off Kingpin's drug mm. thing. Uh, and I was just about to get to Kingpin, but this boss killed my battery, man. Lose. But some of the bosses are random. A lot of the characters are unrecognizable. Yeah. Punisher and Kingpin are the only thing that's related to Marvel. Okay, got it, got it. Well, look, I, as a Punisher fan, I would love to play. I know there's been some other Punisher games and maybe I'll play, but I don't know. But this look. The, the reason why it's, the, these revives are exciting because these are exciting, fun games you could just play. Yeah, and if they if they if they like kind of redo the graphics and whatnot, it does say PS4, Nintendo Switch, and Steam. So, but I'm assuming for PS5 you could download them. Hopefully, I don't. So. I don't think they they'll do anything with the graphics. Uh, well, I mean, like just enhance it a little bit. I'm not talking about like. I don't. I don't feel that. But like X Men: Children and Atom. I remember. Like, oh, let's play a game now, bro. But that'd be I'll sick. Right, I'm going. We'll play. Right, let's play it. Like yeah. Ice Man and. Marvel's Capcom and yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. those games were sick. So exciting for gamers, little fun games you can play on your PlayStation and all that sort of stuff. I wonder what if they're just gonna revamp them because thing is, they've got yeah. to do something different because they are out on certain platforms. So what they've done, 
Uh, so what I read up, what they've done is that you can have online. It's an online game, so other people can join. There you go. That's, that's what they've obviously, done. Obviously, yeah, yeah, online. So that yeah. works out really well. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think I can sit there and watch somebody beat the shit out of me, man. No, I, I'm I, bad I, enough as it is, so I'm happy to just go on easy and just play these yeah, characters and get true, excited. True. Like, I if I get beat up by some next person online, man, I'm like, I'm not that era. So when people are like, why, why are you not on Twitch? I was like, my brother, youngest brother Ash, he's on the uh, the brothers gaming uh, channel. Check it out. It's like, views, guys. Thank you. Whoever's been watching that, man. He's gaming, like, literally shot up to, like, 200 views and whatnot. Eh? Yeah, man, out of the blue. So I don't well, know what's going on there, though. We got, like, 27 subs. What? And we've been getting, like, views of, like, one or two. And then all of a sudden, some of the new Star Wars ones, he's been getting, like, 200 views, 50 views. One of the Ghost of Tsushima one got, like, 20, 30 views. I'm like, that's not bad, considering we ain't pushing that. But something happened. So I'm like, I just keep doing what you're doing. We're going to try and evolve it. We are going to get cameras eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, we're going to get a gaming... Uh, like, both of us are talking about getting a gaming sort of uh, setup. Uh, yeah? Yeah, where, where, you got, stream, where you're close. No, no, not that stream, because you're closer. We can have the camera. We can have the voice. Perfect. What else was that? All right. I, I've avoided... Like, I'm still playing Tekken, but I've avoided going online because I don't want to get my ass kicked. I'm not that guy, bro, because I'm like... Fuck. Fuck you, fuck your mother. And so like, I'll be that guy, but I don't want to do that to some young seven-year-old you kid. You're a man. You're a man. Yeah, yeah, some seven-year-old <laughs> kid who just bust me up in Tekken and I'm dissing him. Um, no, we won't do that. But, we won't do that. Yeah, we'll no. Stay away from online gaming. But, this, so. but no, you know what? First, one one player games are still on it, bro. Mm -hmm. Ghost of Tsushima, freaking God of War. Like, those games are, like, still amazing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They still exist. I still don't have the patience for those, so... I'm happy to do my beatbox. And I'm gonna... You just saw the racing game I was playing. Yeah. Person, bro. Listen, I'm going to play Tekken. I'm still playing that. I'm enjoying that. I will buy... I think I'll buy that Wolverine game. There's a new game coming out with the Monkey King. Bro, oh, Bob yes. That looks make... sick. Yeah. Bob, uh, Ash said, gee, it's going to be hard because that, that developer is known to make hard games. Okay. Because I know you and your temper, so maybe give yeah, that one a miss. The TV so I might give it a miss. Yeah, I might do. <laughs> All, All right. right. Guys, all right, well, let's finish off with... Was there any other news? No. All right, well, let's oh. finish off with uh, this week's retro movie reviews, and we are going to geek out over the planes, trains, and automobiles, 1987. John Candy, the legend, may rest in peace, and Steve Martin, who's just a comical genius as well, and just uh, amazing. This movie brings back so much memories. Just used to watch it as a kid, and there's one scene that always gets us that when we were young. It's when they had to share that bed, and then there was that funny tune. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're looking at he's looking at the one bed, and then the camera zooms into John Candy's face, and, he's like, and he smiles. It's the funniest shit ever. <laughs> it is, you know, we used to die when we were kids. Ah, uh, that's that little. I don't know what it was about that little tune, but but always get because it was the uncomfortableness of John Candy's face. Yeah, yeah. And like it was a, such an angry smile. <laughs> but you know, after he woke up, there were you know. Spooning each other. Yeah, oh, my God. That was another hilarious scene. Yeah. Where's, your, where's your other hand? Yeah, between two pillows. <laughs> that was a <eight> pillow. <laughs> but listen, <clears throat> this movie is exactly what you spoke about earlier, about being yourself and loving yourself. And that was yeah. John Candy. Yeah, yeah. John Candy was coming across as this annoying dude. Yeah. My guy is just trying to get home for Thanksgiving. He's going through all these struggles, right? literally planes, trains, and automobiles to get home. Planes delay, delayed, train crashes. Ooh, and he's got this companion who we just met. Yeah, yeah. John Candy, who he is. This is the most annoyingest dude. They end up sharing the bed together. My guy uses all the towels in the shower. He, he wiped his face. Bare. He wiped the face with his underwear. <laughs> he with his underwear. He dropped his bed on his side of the bed. <laughs> all these sort of things. Like. But John Candy has that emotional moment where he says, I love me. And my wife loved me. Right, and we'll get to that part in a second, which is deep, because it, it the ending is hard, hard as well. No, no, yeah, very hard. But he's just like, this is who I am, you know, and I don't, I don't care what anyone thinks, you know. And, bro, I love that. That scene's so emotional, man, because you feel for him. Because at first you're like, this guy's annoying, bro. But then when he says that, you're like, you're right. Like he, he's, he's and just. Him. And he, you know what? He was genuinely trying to help him get home. He did actually get him help get home. He's just that character. Like you, I want to get you at home. My intentions are good. I want to get you home to your family. And what's heartbreaking at the end is it does take a hard twist where John Candy is constantly on planes, trains, and automobiles. He's got no home because his wife passed away. We didn't know yeah. it to the end, which is very uh, heartbreaking moment and whatnot. It's very touching. But he is literally always on the go because he has no home. His wife was his home. His love was his home you know people like yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Where, you know your family is where your love is you know people have that and that was his wife and without no wife without no love he had no home so he was 
always on planes, trains, and automobiles moving about. I found that man when you, and the soundtrack at the end, which oh. is a nice soundtrack again. I can't remember. Oh, it's, it's, it's a classic one though. Yeah, one that yeah, yeah. That's another great tune. Um, but that film made me feel, man. Uh, John Candy's such a legend. Again, he's got such a happy face. I don't know what it is, but Uncle Buck, Uncle this Buck. um, uh, running, cool, cool one. He's just got this Home Alone. Really jolly face, man. Again, he's got a massive uh, catalogue of movies. Uh, great. He's a great legend, bro. Yeah, in the comedy scene, he's a great legend. I know Ryan Reynolds loves him as a, as a you know as a Canadian as well. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Rotten Tomatoes ninety two. I'm it's not surprised. That's a great score, a great movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, Steve Martin goes through some shit. Bro. He does. He does. That he does that's he falling does. down without that's him going quick, like killing people, bro. That's falling down. <laughs> he went. He he went for a lot. It wasn't that. It was the melted wallet, bro. That I don't know why that scene got me. And, and you know he was there. So do you accept this card? And it's all burnt up. <laughs> Well, that scene killed him because he had a Rolex, right? And you get a Rolex. And then John Candy was like, Casio, which nowadays is pretty big, but here's $17 on a Casio. And the guy tells him, I'm going to have to say goodnight. <laughs> <laughs> John went in a room with a Casio. Oh, God, killed it, bro. I'm going to have to say goodnight. <laughs> I love that scene because he was like, proper, he opened it and he proper placed it. <laughs> oh shit <laughs> oh my god that movie's just hilarious man I swear. Oh. and just like oh. again the journey to get home I mean <laughs> and then again you'll do anything to get home I mean I'm, we spoke about John Candy not having a home but Steve Martin literally trying to do anything to get home to get home you know and maybe this is one of those realisation moments where he works for corporate mm. And, and this was in the 80s when corporates like he needs to go to a meeting these days you're like i mean guys i, I gotta go i gotta go see my family's thanksgiving and people are like, oh yeah yeah we understand yeah, yeah. back in the 80s man shut the fuck up man. yeah you, you need to be up. here yeah <laughs> so like maybe <clears throat> for his character this is a turning point it's like i'm not going through this shit anymore for my like to see my family stay home see my family fuck my job like maybe i don't know it's what i got from it because i was like man if that was me after that i'd be like man fuck this job man i want to be my family because he was saying that guy I need to spend more time at home and all this sort of stuff. And he did whatever he had to do to get home. And John Candy's character did whatever he had to do to, to help get him, him. Help him, yeah, help yeah. Him no, and that's the, uh, I was going to just touch on, that's a beautiful thing because he he had no home, but he he understands the importance of home. Of home. Which is why he wanted to do whatever he could to get Steve Martin home. Deep. It's beautiful when you think about it that way. It's, it's really beautiful. So the thing is, somebody will take this, like whoever's seen planes, trains and automobiles, I don't think they will take that home with them. And that depth of what that character is, because we, when we saw it when we were younger, so when do you think we saw this? We saw it when we were way young. Yeah, when we were kids. What was the year on this? Nineteen eighty-seven. So nineteen eighty-seven, we saw it when we were kids, but then we saw it when we were teenagers. We mm. still found it funny. Mid twenties, still didn't fully understand it. But I'm coming up to forty, and when I watched that last year, I was like, exactly what you said there, was the importance of home. We spend sixty hours. 50 to 60 hours at work, mm. which means you're not present. That that there, bro, is a game changer. It's different because we are 40. you got your family. I live abroad. And I keep talking to my guys. I want to see you guys often. It's hard for me to be away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, the importance of home. Like, I, bro, I've lived around the world. I've yeah. lived in a beautiful country. Yeah, yeah. When everyone has ever asked me, like, where's, where's home? Where do you want to end up retiring or whatever? London. Now, London's a shithole. But I was born and bred here, but only because home is where my family is. You yeah, know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah. And this movie perfectly represents it. I would do anything to get home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like go through yeah. the stresses of traveling and all that sort of stuff, which is long. I don't like doing it. But, you know, it, this, this, again, <clears throat> I think because we're older now, we appreciate those things. This is why I love revisiting these movies. Yeah, they're being great, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you, ta you take away these things, man, because as kids, you don't, you might not see that. But this is what I take away from the movie. And, John Candy and Steve Martin, fucking legends, bro. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, John, uh, what do you call it? I mean, I know we lost John Candy a couple uh, years ago, but Steve Martin still looks the same, bro. <laughs> Vampire, him and um, Martin Short, Martin Short, yeah, um, uh, yeah, vampires, man. But no, bro, listen, great film, great, uh, great ending, very heartfelt. You know, you know, you've laughed throughout a whole movie, yeah, and then suddenly you're like, oh, my heart. John Hughes directed that. 
John Hughes. So John Hughes did like he, Home Alone and all the eighties movies you oh, can think he's of. Brilliant, he's man. like he's got this vibe. Yeah, the vibe. Yeah, he's got the vibe. That's it. I'm gonna try and find the soundtrack because that is a nice sound. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Dun, 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 dun. Soundtrack. Who is it? Uh, yeah, is this the one? It's good that we're together. We could just play shit and yeah, yeah, react yeah. to shit. Like Kevin Bacon, do. wasn't it? Kevin Bacon in the beginning scene. Yeah. Yeah. For the cab, yeah. Oh, no, this is a different soundtrack. Yeah, like, I can't find it. Hold on. Uh, I can take it now. I do love some of the actors' profiles. Like <laughs> their, their photos. Like, this guy here is like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, when the guy was taking the photo, it must have been like, yeah. His yeah. name's Ken Tipton. Ken Tipton. But this guy's mustache, Richard Feek. Fake. I said his name wrong. I'm sorry. Close. His Tonight. mustache is on point. Like, it's a really good Albert Einstein looking mustache. Mustache. Like, I'm, a, I'm, 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 as you guys can tell, I'm a, I like, I like facial hair. But, uh, that is a nice mustache. Uh, who else? Where, how come I can't find the soundtrack I'm talking about, bro? Uh, I don't know. It's it's been quite widely used. Let me see. <clears throat> I know, I know exactly. I'm thinking of the last tune. Yeah, specifically. Um. No, I can't find it, man. I feel like it's called every time something. Every time you go. Yeah, something like that. Exactly. That's <laughs> true. Another great A U soundtrack. Oh, sorry, man. You every can time be... you go away. Every time you go. Yeah, bro, I don't care. This stream's fucking wicked. It's the full-length version. Yeah, are we going to get taken off YouTube? For we could do. Yeah. Well, every I'm going to play it anyway. For my blue room. Yes. Great tune, man. Great tune. We're going to end it on the... Oh, bro, bro, this... Yeah. Great way to end Look it. Look at that smile. Look at that smile. He's got a jolly look to him. I feel like he'd just be the nicest guy to know if he was like your neighbor. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He'd always say good morning and get you treats and whatnot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a weirdo, but no, no, no. John Candy would probably be a legit dude. You yeah. know what? There's there's a clip, you know. Oh, this about... is the uh, instrumental. Is it the instrumental? Yeah, it's not lyrics. Oh, man. Extra long. Oh no, that's under it. Okay. With you oh, it's still... yeah. oh track is deep. Uh wait you like Steve Martin and uh, there's a clip of Steve Martin talking about that scene in the <clears throat> in the train station and he was like when 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 John Candy dropped those lines, like Steve was like, Oh my god, this guy's gonna make me cry. Mm. Like he he delivered it so well, bro. He delivered it so well. But listen, I don't know where you've been. If you haven't seen Planes, Trains and Automobiles, it is one of those movies that has to be in your top 10 of like comedy movies. Yeah, comedy. Uh, like family, I family. family. Yeah, I, I genuinely yeah. can still watch that film. The rewatchability on it is insane. And that guy there, man. Sorry, I just clocked. Larry Hankins. He's the way. He's the guy. Not he's the way. He's the guy. Who was in Avengers and said you have some sort of condition? Oh my goodness! Hey, that's him. Was he? <clears throat> he was the dude whose wife he told his wife to come get the big thing, right? Yeah. And they were like, no, 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 like we got it, we got it. He's like, no, no. She had a baby, came outside, but she didn't scream or anything. And he like spat in his hand and shook Steve Martin's hand. <laughs> but was that him? Not him. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> baby suffering. <laughs> She was screaming or nothing. <laughs> and you got John Candy and Steve Myers. No, no, we got it. We got it. They didn't want to be like, they were like, what the hell? Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, he's, he's in there. He is in it. Oh, he was in, awesome. what do you call it? And he was, uh, mm. <laughs> he have to, what did he say to him? You got a condition. You got Because <laughs> he plays those off key roles. <laughs> he does, yeah. Like he was in Seinfeld. He did, he's done a lot. He, again, he's got a massive catalogue. <clears throat> of a uh, TV and movie shows, but I saw that face and I was like, condition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. All right, man, end that on a happy note. That was a great film, uh, great moment. That's actually made me cry, bro. Great movie, great movie. If you haven't seen it, 
check it out. Mm. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, 1987. Let's do this. All right, brother. Um, that's right. it, man, for this week's episode, man. Take us out. Guys, as always, massive thank you on the love that you guys show on the social media channels, but on here as well. Recently, you guys have been showing much more love, so thank you so much. Keep sharing that love. Keep keep showing that love. Keep sharing that love. Uh, follow us on our social media. Uh, <clears throat> I can't even say it no more, man. Uh, do what you have to do, but if you want to see more about what we do, you can follow our uh, social media, TikTok and Instagram. And uh, I hope you guys are well, honestly. Uh, we can't thank you guys enough. We still get to do some really cool stuff and get to talk to really cool stuff i'm looking to get some really cool guests on very soon as well and just yeah i'm, I'm thankful i suppose i uh i'm always grateful for the love that we get and it's always nice that we can share that love with you and share our excitement of pop culture with you guys as well it's really important to know that what we do we do because we love it guys go to the links in our descriptions to donate to Palestine as well. All right, guys. One love. Peace. Peace.